Steph Neal-Tofsky, CEO of Shaping Portsmouth. I'm delighted to be in the company of Nick Lashley, uh, now of Express FM. Nick, welcome. Thank uh, you. And before we get into your radio show now, yep. tell us a bit about your background and uh, your experiences. Okay, so I'm born and bred in Portsmouth. Um, I have grown up in what I would consider to be a relatively average working class family in the city. And I've pretty much grown up performing, I'd say. I kind of have that niche background where I started performing very early from about the age of four. And it went on into my early 20s before I eventually went to university. Um, so up until, I'd say, 21, I was living in Portsmouth on and off. I was lucky enough to get some contracts abroad, so I would go away, work, and then come back home. Lived in London for a little spell as well in my early 20s, but always came back home. And then I eventually went to uni, which is in Kent, Canterbury, and had an incredible three years. I never expected to go to uni. I was quite anti-uni up until that point. But surprisingly to me and everyone, absolutely loved it. I had the best three years of my life. I studied radio and English literature, which is a bizarre combination. Yeah. It's a really bizarre combination, but the uni that I went to gave me the opportunity to study more than one thing. A bit like the American structure where you major in one, okay. but you still have the opportunity to explore and study the other. Yeah. So I majored in English and I once I'd finished uni, I came back home again, mm. as you all do, and I was a little bit lost as to what my next move would be. I'm really fortunate that I've got an amazing base of friends and family here and Portsmouth is so tight knit anyway that it's a place I always come to to regroup. I find like it's quite grounding, being near the sea and just being around incredible people, it does wonders for me. And I eventually, after a few weeks of hunting, well I say weeks, a few good months of hunting, <laughs> I got a job uh, with Bauer Media. And that was based in Manchester. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, just over two years ago, I moved to Manchester. I was living in an amazing apartment with a close friend who I'd also gone to university with and started work for the incredible company that is Bauer Media um, within the radio sector. And two months later, COVID-19 took off. The pandemic kicked off and we were all told we were going to have to work from home. And so once again, I came home to Portsmouth <laughs> <laughs> and I've been here ever since. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Well, look, I, I was going to say, why back? Why come back? Mm. But actually, you keep coming back. So yeah. you are our proverbial boomerang, yeah? Yeah, I literally am a boomerang. I'm the Portsmouth boomerang. But I know this is something that not, it's not only myself that feels this. I have this conversation a lot with my friends who have been out and about around the country mm. or overseas working. There's something about Portsmouth that makes you feel good. Yeah. Um, it does something to you where you're able to relax and just enjoy yourself and it helps clear the fog I think sometimes when you're a little bit lost and you're wondering what your next move is going to be so that's why I always come back and also family I've got a massive family huge family <laughs> probably take up about a quarter of the population oh, of Portsmouth <laughs> so a big family I can't ever stay away from them long yeah. um so yeah, I'm, I will always come back to Portsmouth. I love it. And you're back now hosting the morning show on yeah. Express FM. Yeah. We talked earlier about how long the partnership with Express FM shaping has been, yeah. uh, which is fantastic. Um, so did you have you done a, a long radio stint show like this before, or was this new for you as well? This is my first big show. So I started at Express, I think I was trying to, ch I was chatting to Mason Jordan about this the other day, who was the previous um, breakfast host yeah. at Express, mm. and because my memory's terrible, <laughs> I couldn't remember when I first came over to Express, but it was, I think it was just about when I finished uni, mm. and I was back in that period of being at home, and I emailed off a demo in the hope that I would be able to get some experience <laughs> in yeah. some way. And then the shows just kind of rolled into one. I took every opportunity I could possibly get. If there was a show going, yeah, put me down, I'll cover it. I'm quite um, pernickety about being able to do everything. And what I mean by that is I'm not technically minded, naturally. I'm more creatively minded. Mm -hmm. But it was so important to me to be able to hold my own on desks and the, techno like the technology side of radio. Yep. So I was like, the only way I'm going to learn that is by doing it and making the mistakes. So I put my name down for every show that was available. 
Um, did quite a few bits and bobs. I did like the Decades Rewind for a while. I was fortunate enough to cover Drive yeah. um, last year while James Percy was in Panto at the King's mm. Theatre. Mm-hmm. And then I got an email from Mason and Miles uh, about two or three months ago now suggesting Express Breakfast. And it was a shock at the time. I knew it was going to be a lot to take on. Mm. But it was such a good opportunity. There was no way that I could say no. <laughs> and I'm so glad that I didn't because yeah. I'm having just the best time. It's mm. such an amazing hub of people mm. and it links to the community in every respect. Yeah. Everybody knows everybody. There's always somebody you can talk to about an event, be it theatre, be it cabaret, whether it's sports related, community based. Mm. It's just, yeah, it's an absolute beacon in the city. I love it. Indeed, and, and it's amazing how quickly time runs away. I want to talk about your plans for the show in a moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of the way that um, you come across, I've listened to you probably half a dozen, six or seven times as I, as I come in to the office, you know, from, from where I live. And your enthusiasm comes across. Aww. I mean, you know, and, and that is natural. I mean, people, you know, when, when you've got someone who's passionate about something, yeah. it's obvious. And yours comes across that way. So, oh, so, nice. so as one listener, <laughs> <laughs> please, please don't lose that because it, it's engaging. For me, it's engaging. Oh, you know, and, and I listen to a lot of radio. Um, uh, and, and for me, that monotone just turns me off. But for yours, the light and shade is great. So oh, that's there you amazing. go. A little that's bit so of advice from me. But anyway, so listen, finally, plans for the show. Yeah. And we, people often talk about vision. Let's not talk about vision. Let's yeah. talk about your feeling. What do you want the show to be known for? I kind of take every day as it comes with radio because I don't want to pass up an opportunity or plan things that's too much. But I will say that the one thing I am really passionate about is interviews and linking breakfast to the community as much as I possibly can. And so the more I can talk to people from Portsmouth, bring them into the show, introduce them to listeners, the better. Um, I know you were talking about it being important to have that relationship between the presenter and the audience, I think even more so in a city like Portsmouth because it's so small. Um, I want people to be able to listen in the morning and feel like they're listening to somebody they know or they're hearing uh, an interview with somebody who they know through a friend of a friend. I want it to have that familiarity and that warmth so that people can... Just it can help lift. Radio is an amazing thing, especially during the pandemic. I think yeah. it proved just how important and significant the medium is and yeah. how much it's needed. Um, so if I can bring that to the city, then that's all I can hope for. All right. Well, <laughs> in my humble opinion, you've made a great start. Oh, Nick, you. it's been great to meet you today. Thank you very much for coming in. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me.